problem 5.23. When a customer places an order, the computerised accounting information system automatically checks to see whether the customer has exceeded their credit limits. Past records indicate that the probability of customers exceeding their credit limits is 0.1. Okay, so I'm reading through my question, and whenever I'm reading one of these wordy types of questions, make sure that you, you start thinking about what type of probability question it could be. So I've got some kind of fixed probability of exceeding the credit limit, point one. Suppose that on a given day, 10 customers place orders. Okay, at this stage, I'm already thinking binomial. As soon as I've got a situation where I've got some kind of fixed probability and then I'm going to repeat something multiple times, so any kind of custom survey, quality control survey, where I've got a certain number of customers, a certain number of items, makes me start thinking binomial. But let's just finish reading through the question and then we'll double check our characteristics. So suppose that on a given day, 10 customers place orders. Assume that the number of customers that the system detects as having exceeded their credit limits is distributed using as a binomial random variable. So look, if there was any doubt, we've been told it's binomial and so we can certainly proceed. But just as a, a sort of double check, if we hadn't been given that information, we would have said to ourselves, we've got this fixed probability. When we look at each customer, they're either going to exceed their credit limit or they're not going to. We haven't been given any other information. And so the basic problem that we're working with here has two outcomes. We're going to repeat that process over 10 customers. So that's like having 10 trials or an N of 10. We've got that fixed probability. When we say look at the second customer, whether they've exceeded their credit limit or not has nothing to do with the first customer. And so we certainly have that independent. We've got our fixed probability of 0.1. So if we think of exceeding the credit limit as a success, and remember, success and failure are just the generic terms. We've got our fixed probability, so P. We've got our N, 10 customers. This is definitely a binomial type scenario. And so as soon as we know that, whether we've had to work it out ourselves or whether we've been told it in the question, we can certainly go through and use our tables and the knowledge we have about the binomial and some of the shortcut calculations for things like expected value, variance and standard deviation. We can take advantage of the pattern that's within a binomial scenario. Um, so whenever it's binomial, we've got our tables, we've got the shortcuts. Um, anytime it's a discrete situation like this, just check if it's binomial before you go to the general case. Okay, so let's have a look at the four parts that you need to, to go through. What are the mean and standard deviation of the number of customers exceeding their credit limit? Okay, so when it's binomial, to work out mean and standard deviation, we do have our shortcut formula. So as long as you know n and as long as you know p, the mean will always be n times p. So 10 times 0.1 gives me a mean of 1, which tells me on average 1 out of the 10 customers will exceed their credit limit. For variance, again, we have a shortcut formula. And remember, both the mean and the variance formulas are on your formula sheet for the mid-exam. So we can say that, OK, it's binomial. Variance will therefore be n times p times 1p. 1 minus p. So 10 times 0.1 times 0.9 will be our variance. Put that into your calculator. We, of course, want standard deviation. So we just take the square root of that and we come up with 0.3775. So anytime it's binomial, go straight to those shortcut formulas for mean and standard deviation. It will save you a lot of time. Now, parts B, C, and D ask us to have a look at some probability questions. Now this is where we have to use our table and here we know our n, we know our p. So in terms of finding probabilities, the first step would be to go to your binomial table, find the area for when n equals 10, then find the specific column for when you have a fixed probability of 0.1. 
and that is your binomial probability distribution for this particular scenario. So we can work our way through. Now the first one, and keep in mind these are usually written in a word style, where you have to think about what it is you're trying to calculate. The probability that no customer will exceed their credit limit. So that's the same as saying that we have zero customers exceeding their credit limit. So we're looking for an outcome of zero. Remember X represents the number of customers over their credit limit. We're looking for the probability that X is equal to zero in part B. Now, when it's just an equals probability, it is a straight walk-up from the table. You've got your distribution from N equals 10, the fixed probability of 0.1 tells you the column, and then use your ruler, find X equal to zero, the corresponding probability in your tables should say 0.349. And it's always important when you're preparing, sort of working through your two questions, even if you have a look at an answer for something, make sure that you did know how to get that probability from the table yourself. Okay, part C, what is the probability that one customer will exceed their credit limit? So this time we're still interested in an equals probability. This time we want the probability that x is equal to 1. So we can read it straight from the table, read across x equals 1, the row, and the corresponding probability is 0.387. Part D, what is the probability that two or more customers will exceed their credit limit? Well, as soon as we see something like this, we know that it's not just an equals probability. Two or more, well, that could be two, that could be three. It could be anything up to 10. That's the most customers that could exceed their limits in a sample of 10. So notation-wise, we're looking for the probability that x is greater or equal to 2. Always check those boundaries. Yes, 2 is included, so it's x greater or equal to 2. Now, we know the tables only do equal, so you would have to go through and add up all the probabilities that are included. x equal to 2, x equal to 3, x equal to 4, all the way up to 10. That's a lot of probability, so we can in fact use a shortcut. We can say, well, they all add up to 1, so let's just focus on 1 minus the ones we don't want. Now, the only ones we weren't including was x equal to 0, x equal to 1. And since we'd already found those, we can combine those. They're the probabilities we don't want. Use our complement rule and just subtract them from 1. So that gives us 0.264. And that is indeed the probability of getting two or more customers exceeding their credit.